All right, good morning, students. Welcome to Junior Church. I am happy as a clam that you joined us this morning, and we all know how happy clams are. So we're going to go ahead, and before we get started, we need to open up in a word of prayer. So let's go ahead and put our hands over our head. Down over our face. Now let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you for this day. thank you for this day. Thank you for your son. This church, this church and our mamas. And our mamas. We, love you. we love you. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. And we want to say happy Mother's Day to all you mamas out there. You are wonderful because without you, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> little joke. Get Bye. It. Okay, but happy Mother's Day. We love you. And make sure, if you can, call mama today. I already called my mom this morning. Wish her happy Mother's Day. I actually sang her happy Mother's Day. But anyways, okay. So here we go. What do you got, Miss Mark? We're going to sing the Bible stands again, and we're going to do it right this time. And this week. time we won't mess up. Three verses and then the chorus. Mr. Okay. Yeah, here we go. The Bible stands like a rock undoubted. With the storms of time. I'll hold it its pages burn with the truth eternal, and they glow with the light sublime. The Bible stands like a mountain forever when the world has passed on. Some of the back pages says, By inspiration it has been given, and its precepts I will obey. The Bible stands every test we give it for its author is divine. By grace alone I expect to live it and to prove it and make it mine. The Bible stands though the hills may tumble it will stand. wasn't too bad. I made a few mistakes just to prove that we're still human, because I don't want you to feel bad. All right, what's the next song, Miss Wire? God loves me, I know he does, and then I clap it with my hands, I stomp it with my feet, and I feel it in my heart. Yes, okay? we have to sing it nice and loud. <laughs> All right. God loves me, I know he does, God loves me. I know he does, God loves me. I know he does, I clap it with my hands, I stop it with my feet. I asked him in my heart, boom, boom. he came into my soul. Woo! For the Bible tells me Next verse, Mrs. Warwick. Jesus never sinned, but I have. Jesus never sinned, but I For the Bible, I can't hear you at home. Here we go. Jesus died for me. And now he lives. Jesus died for me. And now he lives. Jesus died for me. That's it, ready? I clap with my hands. Step with my feet. I asked him in my heart. Boom, boom. He came into my soul. Well, that was? That was. Oh, how about we sing this song, I Love Him Better Every D-A-Y. We haven't sang this in a long time. Do you guys at home know what D-A-Y spells? Day. Very good. That was excellent. So, I Love Him Better Every D-A-Y. There's different versions. Huh? Fix my tie. Is that better? Here we go. I love him better every D A Y. Ready? I love him better every D A Y. I love him better every D A Y. 
Close by his S-I-D-E, I will love E-I-D-E, I love him better every day, A-Y. Now, there's also the cheerleader version, Mr. Wark. Oh, dear. You know that one goes? Oh, dear. It goes like this. I love him better every D-A-Y. Woo! I love him better every D-A-Y. Close by his S I D E I will love B I D E I love him better every D A Y. Woo! I'm now, sorry, I don't think the cheerleaders quite do that kind of. Thing. Okay, now we got the football version. You guys want to do that one? Yeah. It goes like this. I love him better every D A Y. I love him better every D A Y. Close by his S I D E. I I don't see you do it, Ms. Wire. No. I love him Sorry, better Sorry. every D A Y. Huh. There, pretty good. Now there's the parachute version. Oh, parachute? Oh, my yeah. Word. It goes like this okay. I love him better every D A Y. I love him better every D A Y. Close by his. I will love. I love him better every day. Is that how that works? Yeah. You fall out of the airplane. Do we do the best one? Do we do the soccer version? Maybe next week. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, our last no, song. Nobody's a nobody. Nobody's a nobody. Sing it out, students. Nobody's a nobody. nobody. Everybody's somebody. Nobody's a nobody to Jesus. Everybody has a place. Nobody's just wasting. Can't hear you at all. You are precious in his sight. I am precious in his sight. You're the apple of his eye. I'm the apple of his eye. He has great plans for you. I will obey him. Nobody's a nobody. Everybody's somebody. Nobody's just wasting space. Nobody's a nobody to God. That was absolutely fantabulous. Now, we've got a special lesson today. And does anybody want to guess what we're talking about today? Pete. Have no idea. We finished Pete last week, so I don't want to repeat <laughs> this week. So we will do a new one and I was doing some casual reading on the Strong's Concordance today and uh, just you know some casual reading and then when I was done with that I read this because I had nothing else to do and then when I was done with that this morning I wrote I read the Christian history of the Constitution of the United States so I got that knocked out before this you don't believe me do you well this morning we're going to talk about why I believe the Bible is God's word. This is very important for us to know this. But before we do that, let's go ahead and stand up. Everybody stand up. All right, even you at home. Ray, stretch up as high as you can. Oh, stretch, stretch, stretch. Oh, stretch out as high as you can. Yes, 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 yes. Feel that pinched nerve. Yes, okay, back down. Excellent, very good. Uh oh, don't sit down yet. Back up. Okay, ready? Try it again so we don't fall asleep during the lesson. Ready? Up, high up. Okay, yes. Good. All right. Have a seat. Excellent job. Yeah. Now, what what do all these books, what do they all have in common? They're big. They're big. They're 500 pages. Well, there's a lot of pages. They all have what inside of it? Words. Words. What else? Information. Information. All of these books have information. Now, these books here are random, and um, they're, they're good books, 
But they're not this. Does anybody want to know what this is right here? Anyone want to guess? The Bible. the Bible. Why is the Bible so special? It's God's word. Excellent. Why else? Because what else? It tells you about um, how you can worship him. That's good. It tells you how you can worship him. That's excellent. So God gave us a book, and it's very, very special. But you have to understand something. And Travis, make sure this is in focus. Hop behind that camera. Can you guys read this with me? It is 2 Timothy 3.16. Okay, all together. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. God is, is profitable for doctrine. For instruction. Pretty good. Now, how much scripture is given by inspiration of God? All. All. All of it is. All scripture. What? You better say that one again. I think we skipped a little. Did we skip? I'm trying to read it backwards. Okay. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. See, students, you have to understand something that the Bible was written by God. God gave men of God the words to say. He let them use their personalities but he told them what to say. And the important part is, it says it is given for what? It's for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. This tells us how to live. You see, the Bible is so important. I don't just live my life any way I want. Once I become a Christian, I follow what the Bible says. But we can believe the Bible because it's God's word. God breathed means God gave men message, his message. He chose to write it. He let them write it down. We know the Bible is true and reliable. How do we know that? Because it's God's word. Can God lie, students? No. Yes or no? Can God lie? No. Can God lie? No. Yes or no? No. No. Louder. No. Louder. No. no. You at home, you're listening. Excellent job. I'm going to give you some jelly beans. Ready? Catch. Oh, excellent job. Good job. Excellent. Excellent. Somebody else? No, students, you'll get yours later. Yes, right there. I see your hand. Excellent. Listen. Okay, good job. Hi, Mr. Martin. So God gave inspired word. God never lies. Now listen. Now just, if God, if that's all the proof we had, would that be enough proof? Would it be class? Yeah, because God can't lie. If that's the only proof we had is that God told us so, that would be enough proof. But God loves us so much, he actually gave us all kinds of proof so that Christopher and Travis and Shanene and Drew and Jose and everybody else knows that the Bible's true. Here we go. So this is, this is kind of cool. Let's see here. Let me separate this. God gave us 66 books of the Bible. How many books of the Bible? 66. 66. There's 66 books of the Bible. So I kind of divided this up, and I gave us an illustration so this would help us. Now, let's just say this represents the whole Bible. Okay? What's this represent? No, not darts, the whole Bible, all right? Now, inside of the Bible, the Bible is divided up into two sections. Anybody know what two sections? Yeah, Old and new. Man, you guys are smarter than the average bear. So this is 39 blue and orange darts. Anybody want to guess what this represents? The whole new. Old Testament. So 39 makes up the Old Testament. So from Genesis, starting out, now we keep going. The New Testament. And we've got 27 green and blue and maybe some other colors in there. Anybody want to ask what this represents? The Old. old. No, the new. No, new. So we have the Old Testament and we have the New Testament. Now look at this wire. Ready? 
If I kind of hold my hands out like this, what does it kind of think I'm representing? The cross. The cross. Boy, you guys are sharp. Mm -hmm. So the cross is kind of the dividing line, so to speak, between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was written in those 400 years of what we call silence. And then Jesus came, and then we wrote the New Testament. Out of the New Testament, 27 books, all 27 people that wrote, not 27 people, but 27 books were written by people who saw Jesus. Now, the 39 books were written by 40 different people all together, new and old, and they all either prophesied of Jesus or they saw Jesus. So think about that. Okay, ready? You got 39 books here, 27 books here, 39 and 27 is 66. So we take the old and the new and we put them together. They all fit perfectly and that gives us our Bible. See, you'll never forget that. Every time you play darts, you'll think, that reminds me of God's Word. Just like that, okay? So we've got 66 books. Now, so here's the deal. It all goes together. Now, he gave us 66 eyewitnesses. Now think about that because we've got 66 books. Now, if you were to think about, if you were to go to court of law and they said, all right, I saw the fact that Lucas made his bed this morning. <laughs> so Lucas says, Dad, I made my bed. And I'd say, well, what proof do I have? Well, you could look at it and I'd say, well, maybe your mom made that bed. No, Dad, I made the bed. But if Travis came up and Mom came up and they both said, we saw Lucas make the bed, they would be eyewitnesses. So if you're in a court, eyewitness is very important. If you have an eyewitness says they saw it. So people who wrote the words, <coughs> Jesus spoke the New Testament, actually saw him. Now this is very important. Can we read this right here? Read this aloud. Ready? Luke chapter 1, 1 and 2. Ready? For as much as many have taken in hands to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Now this is very important, students. It says here, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministered the world. So here's the deal. These people that wrote the New Testament, they saw Jesus. They talked to Jesus. They knew who Jesus was. So they just didn't hear about Jesus. They actually saw him or talked to people who saw him. Like the Apostle Paul, he didn't see Jesus, or maybe, uh, I should say, Apostle Paul um, uh, wasn't, one of the, wasn't one of the disciples with Jesus, but he was an eyewitness. He talked to people. He was able to see, and, and God helped him. Remember how the road to Damascus? He actually heard and talked and heard from God. He was an eyewitness. Okay, so that's important. So we have 66 different books. And we have eyewitnesses. So I even wrote this right here. I, I reproduced it. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, this is almost as good as the CEF, our Child Evangelism Fellowship. So the 66 stands for what, students? 66 eyes. And what is, what is, the, what is inside the, uh, the sixes? 66 eyes. So eyewitnesses. That means eyewitnesses. They heard from God. Some of, some of them saw God. They all heard God's voice. There were eyewitnesses, 66 books, eyewitnesses. Now, this is important. The letter B in books, we say, stands for big time power. Now, the Bible is very old. It's even older than your parents. I know, that's pretty old. But when we obey God, it changes our lives. Ephesians chapter 6, where are you at? There it is. Verse 17. Okay, read this with me. Ephesians 6, 17. And... I can't hear you. Ooh, the sword of the spirit. It's got big time power. I brought some swords here. Is this a very powerful sword? No. No, not really. No, not very powerful. We got this at Legoland in China. 
I think that was the thing, the little road ride thing we did. So I overpaid for this Lego land thing way back at the uh, sword. Is this the kind of sword I was talking about? Yeah. No. no. Now we've got another sword. Now this one probably would hurt. If I smoked you in the dome with this, it would hurt. Ow. But is this going to kill you? No. <coughs> Excuse me. Is this going to hurt you? Not really. No. Is that the kind of sword I was talking about? No. 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 Here's another sword. Yeah. This is kind of cool. This is an actual sword from, I can't remember. A missionary gave this to my dad many years ago. But is that the kind of sword it's talking about in the Bible? No. no. It's really a representation. And what it means is the big time power is the power of the word of God. You see, there's so much power in here. And it tells us how to live and how we should live and how we can love one another and how I can overcome the power of sin and how I can lead other people to Christ. And this Bible has changed millions of people's lives. It's got big time power. So we said that 66 could stand for eyewitnesses. The B could stand for? Big time power, yes, excellent, wonderful. Now, we're going to say that the O in book, second O, stands for Old Testament proof. What's it stand for? Old Testament proof. What's it stand for? Old Testament proof. Now, there are prophecies in the Bible in the Old Testament. Psalms, Micah, Isaiah, Daniel. And there were Old Testament prophecies that would prophesy about what was going to happen in the future. Now, those prophecies, such as Micah 5, 2. We're only going to read the first three words. But thou what? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. This was written thousands of years before Jesus was even born. And they did that because what? Micah, he didn't see Jesus. But he wrote about that there was going to be a man named Jesus born. It prophesied. The book of Isaiah also talks about prophecies of coming true. Now, I heard something like this. For all the prophecies in the Bible, you would have to take quarters and cover the entire state of Texas. And in order for all those prophecies just to be by chance, you would get one chance to pull out one quarter to cover the entire state of Texas with an X on it. What would the odds be? It would be one in like billions. But yet these prophecies came true. So not only is God's word proof, big time power is proof. I've seen people's lives change because of the Bible. They used to be drunkards. They used to not want to work. They used to maybe be abusive to people. And now they love people. They want to work. They want to serve God. Big time power. We've got Old Testament proof. The Old Testament proved it. Now this is cool. Genesis 23.10. The Bible mentions a group called the, I think it's Hittites. H-I-T-T-I-T-E-S. And for a long time, these people could not be found. Was the Bible mistaken? The Bible says in Genesis 23.10, And Ephraim dwelt among the children of Heth. And Ephraim the Hittite. And it talks about how he had a conversation with Abraham. And he's thinking, oh, well, there's no proof of that. Well, guess what they found about 100 years ago? Proof of the Hittites. That's correct. Archaeologists did dicks, dicks. And in 1906, a man by the name of Hugo Winkler discovered the Hittite capital while digging in the country of Turkey. Very good. Pretty good. That's a pretty good impression. Some historians record that Israelites left Egypt after the Great Plague. What Great Plagues were they talking about? Moses. Moses, that's right. So Old Testament proof. This is awesome. And this is pretty cool too. Does anybody want to guess what Isaiah 40, 22 predicted way, way, way before we ever knew it? What was the world? Anybody want to guess? A circle. It was round. So it says here, what? Let's read it. It is he that sitteth upon the circle. 
Isaiah prophesied that the world was round. If you look outside, it kind of looks flat, doesn't it? Is the world flat? No, because the Bible tells us it's what? It's round. Now, here's another proof. It's known around the world. Does anybody want to guess what the best-selling book of all time is? The Bible. the Bible. Do you know how many languages the Bible, and this was by Child Evangelism Fellowship, probably old. Anybody want to guess how many translations the Bible, how many languages? A thousand. A thousand. Higher. Two thousand. Yes! Two thousand languages. Two thousand languages. It's been translated in the Bible. It's the most popular book. It's also the most controversial book. People don't want to hear about sin. They don't want to be told what to do. So we could say the B, the, okay, here we go. We're out of time. 66 for eyewitnesses. B stands for big time power. O stands for Old Testament proof. O stands for other, other proof. There's actually other proof. We talked about it. How, the, how Isaiah said it was round. And how Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. We said K stands for known around the world. What does K stand for? Known. known around the world. Now here we go. Now this is cool. This is probably my favorite part. And it'll be our last one. And we've got about three minutes and so we'll be done. It all says the what? Same message. Same message. Say it out loud. Same, Same message. Again. Same message. Again. Same message. Again. Same message. Same message. There were 40 different men that wrote the Bible. But even though 40 different men wrote the Bible, they all say the same thing. They all have the same message. They all go together. All 40 men wrote the Bible. And the Bible is so poetic, it goes together. It doesn't contradict itself. 40 different men. How could 40 different men over hundreds and thousands of years write and it don't contradict itself? Anybody want to guess how that's possible? Because of God. You see all the proofs we have that the Bible is true and we can believe it? Other people take religions and they may pick one verse out of here and pick one verse out of here and pick one verse out of here. That's not how it works. Our Bible all goes together from generation all the way to revolution. I mean from Genesis all the way to Revelations. It all says the same thing. It all goes together. And remember... All 40 men, as they wrote, we've got the Old Testament, 39 books. We've got the New Testament, 27 books. We have Jesus in the middle. What do I look like right now? A cross. It all says the same thing. That's why I can believe the Bible. I can know God is telling me the truth. Here we go again, and we're going to be done. We said right here, 66 stands for what? Eyewitnesses. First B stands for? Big time power. Second O? Old Testament truth. Third, Old our second O? Okay. No world round. And S? Same. Same message. 66 books of the Bible. We can believe what the Bible says. It all says the same thing. We're going to talk about it next week as we keep going. Why we can believe the Bible. You, it's important, students. As you get older, people might say, why do you believe the Bible anyways? How do you know it's true? You can say, because 40 different men, 40 different authors, over hundreds of years, different generations, different languages, all said the same thing. That's powerful. We are going to talk about the book of Psalms. We're going to talk about Isaiah and Micah and how they prophesied and how even now they talk about prophecies. Remember Jesus, crucifixion? We're going to talk about it's all prophesied. We know it's true. And you can believe it, students. But you have to make it personal. You have to believe yourself. Your mom and dad can't believe it for you. Your grandma and grandpa can't believe it for you. You have to believe it. Remember, the first step is salvation. What is sin? Sin is anything that I think, say, or do that breaks God's law. If you'll A, admit that you're a sinner, 
If you'll be, believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, and see, choose, confess him as Savior. You can be saved, students. You can be saved. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Students, the Bible is real. It's important. We live by it. We believe it. I hope you believe it too. We'll talk about it more next week. I love you, students. And very soon... Very soon we get to have junior church together. I cannot wait, and I miss you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Let's close in prayer. Ready? Here we go. Hands over our head. And let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us your word, for dying on the cross from our sins. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, students, one hand over your head. Other hand over your head. Both of them, say bye. bye. Happy Mother's Day. Bye.